hey welcome back to the lecture so let's get started working with timers and we will start with basic timers now the basic timers have basic counting engine and they are majorly used for time based generation and these timers are very simple in nature that's why they do not have input output channels associated with them so let's not worry about the input output channels for a time being and these timers do not have that now let's go further and here is a timer assembly of stm32 basic timer so or you can also call it as block diagram now if you take a look into this block diagram it is very very simple so here you can see that a counter place this is a counting place okay here the counting takes place and we call it as counter register so this is actually of 16 bit okay so for basic timers the count register or counter is of 16 bit so this is a place where counting takes place and here you can see that that counting is powered by a clock that we call as count clock so a counting speed is depending upon count clock all right so this timer count clock is actually produced by this prescalar engine here and you can see that that is an input clock to the prescalar engine and that input clock is actually coming from here that is the control block of the timer and for the control block of the timer another clock is coming here that is the main timer clock so for this engine the main source of the clock is from the rcc engine that we call as reset and clock control so you may be knowing this point from our earlier courses that the rcc block that is reset and clock control block of the microcontroller manages clocks to the various peripherals of the microcontroller and it is also true that it manages clock for the timer peripheral also so that's why timer clock is a clock which is the main clock supplied to the timer peripheral that is here and that is then processed by the control block of the timer peripheral and that clock is then supplied to the prescalar and here you can use the prescalar to slow down this clock so you can slow down this clock in order to produce the timer count clock and the counting speed of this counter depends upon this clock and you can also find one important register so please note this register this is very very important that is called as arr register that is called as auto reload register so whenever this counter reaches the value which is stored in this register the counter resets back to zero and it will start counting again so in the previous diagram I have shown some threshold isn't it that is some pre-programmed value so that value you have to store in the auto reload register so when the counter value reaches this value the counter rolls back to zero and it generates an event called update event and that update event has the potential to interrupt the processor now let's move to the next slide all right so the time base unit includes the time base unit means so this whole thing is called as time base unit so this is a time base unit of the basic timer and the main parts of the time base units are the up counter so that is this one the up counter and the counter register that is timer underscore count okay so the x you can replace by any uh, 
timer peripheral number like timer one count register timer six count register like that okay the counter register holds the value which is there in the counting engine that is the up counter okay? that means uh, this counter value which is actually accessed by the firmware by using the counter register and then there is also something called as prescalar register that is timer underscore psc and that is used to configure this prescalar engine and after that we have very important register auto reload register that is also called as timer arr which is used to hold the reload value for the timer so when the up counting value reaches the value which is stored in the auto reload register the counter will rolls back to the zero and it will start counting again that's about the time base unit of the basic timer now let's move forward all right so now we have got the basic overview about the timer clock the prescalar output clock counter clock the auto reload register etc but all these things you can only understand uh, by doing one exercise and these four parameters are really important in order to write a timer application successfully so we'll understand all these things by doing one exercise now the exercise is very simple use the basic timer to generate an interrupt for every 100 milliseconds and toggle the gpio or led inside the timer irq handler and verify using the logic analyzer so we are going to understand so many things by doing this single exercise so we are going to understand how to configure the basic timer how to generate the desired delay that is the time based generation and how to uh, enable the timer interrupt how to identify the timer irq number how to implement the irq handler and lots of other things we are going to understand in by doing this exercise all right from the next lecture onwards let's try to uh, complete this exercise i'll see you in the next lecture